Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. Today we have a familiar face coming back on the show. We have the man, the myth and the legend, Mr. Francis Hunt coming back on today. Thanks a lot for coming back on Francis. Delighted to be back with you and your followers. Thank you for uh, uh, having me. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, it's, it's so important to have somebody who is as good as navigating these markets as yourself. Uh, maybe we should start with a congratulations on the three shorts you gave in the cryptocurrency market, which was IOTA, Cardano, and Solana. Two of them are home and safe, and we're still working on Solana, um, but it's gone your way massively. So congratulations on those trades. Yeah, thank you. Solana is a macro, macro uh, sell-off one. Um, it, you know, we called for $3 when it was upper 40s. So th there's there's a lot more drama to come out on that one, yeah. So the, the, the Solana short, um, it's very interesting that you called for the $3 level way when we were up $30, $40. Um, and that's before FTX or any of this was even a thing. So anybody who thinks that technical analysis doesn't work needs to think again. Um, so congratulations on those. Shall we get into a little bit about what's happening in current markets? We had some pretty significant news from the Bank of Japan today, some an overnight surprise, uh, which the cryptocurrency market has benefited slightly from on a dollar weakness. Should we maybe kick things off with a little bit of dollar analysis? Yep. Um, so dollar is uh, soft at the moment, uh, but... Uh, I hasten to give people too much cold comfort on the basis that it's going to go away because I'm watching the 10 year uh, rates on, uh, and that's the driver for me, the the, the US 10 year uh, for when it's showing signs. So if I just bring up, uh, in fact, if I do a chart share, I mean, we're very visual, um, uh, you'll probably see this. And the dollar lags the 10 year, but the 10 year is going to be the one that will say to me look uh it's it's time don't get too ahead of your horse here yeah. the tenure rates uh and the thing that with america they're probably always going to raise rates a little harsher and a little harder you know the uk got punished for not raising rates by the same rate and the same degree uh and they had a run now i think uh that was a lesson to the ecb because uh agent orange uh lagarde started talking excessively hawkishly and we will be, she was trying to have a draggy moment. You know, they all got to put on their Superman cape and be bosses. Uh, and she was talking about how much she'll do. Uh, but there's a lot of false bluster in all of that because there's only so much you can do before other things break. Uh, and they'll break a lot faster in the very fragmented EU zone. Don't forget, this is a country where they officially tightening and putting up interest rates, um, but they were also providing liquidity to the Italian bond market. So, you know, this is putting out the fire. We must put out the fire. You know, it's so cold out there. We must put out the fire. But they're pouring petrol on one side of the fire and then they're putting some water to be seen. Watch us put water on the fire. Watch us put water on the fire. Give us credit, you know. Um, and then there's a guy going to the other end and keeping a bit of the heat going. So um, it, it, this is a very funny environment. So the point of that is that uh, treasuries, I think, uh, but they also, the Americans are also restricted in how far because things are going to break. This is why I say something breaks. Either way, we go until something breaks. So this is the game of breaking something and watching something break. So that, that eventuality is going to likely materialize. Um, and the, the concern for the dollar is that it needs to, whilst Powell is still in charge, the last person he wants to be is the guy who presided over the busting of the dollar. So he will always largely be, A, probably talking more hawkish than most people expect. And they're hiding behind this phony labor stats. Uh, we got such a hot labor market, you know, to justify we, it's not really a recession, um, which is a bit like uh, me changing the rules on you halfway through, uh, you know, backgammon game and then saying, well, this is a knight from the chessboard and it can do special moves. You know, uh, it, it's just it's just deception um, and it's fakery and messery messing around. So but anyway, so they're going to well, the point of all that parable is. They're going to stay ahead of tightening to maintain dollar dominance when there's trouble. And they're usually the biggest beneficiary when things break in terms of fear. Everybody charges in. 
to the dollar as safe haven. Now that is reducing. I'm not being a dollar fanboy. Many people will make that. I want to see it end. It's the absolute deception. And I would actually say when the curtain is pulled back, untold uh, malfeasance will be unveiled. That will be a bit like the, the, the rolling discoveries of the FTX tobacco, you know? You slowly find out more and more and more and realize it was a complete bun fight in a circus. Well, the scale that you'll find behind the dollar is there. But until such time, unfortunately, it's perception is reality. Uh, and so we're in that narrative. And if the tenure is going to start firming up again, and it's doing a hammer. So I was threatening you with a chart there. So let's share screen and do that if you'll allow it. Uh, yeah, there uh, we go. The, the 10 year yields, of course, has led the dollar. Um, really, so Correct. we're, we're Correct. talking about the uh, ten-year yields actually firming up now, having had a pullback. Um, and I'll I'll, I'll 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 leave it there and let you do the rest. Yes. So that little is a is a is a hammer there broadly. So when people were saying, "Is it over? Is it over?" Uh, you know, many times on the dollar bull that we were also responsible for calling them up. If, you know, I mean, Solana and IOTA, you know, little patterns that, and thank you for paying credit to me. We get plenty wrong, by the way. Um, but the things I'm truly proud of are the big macro calls of real scale. And there was a real dominance. So we've done, you know, oil and gold long as a delta neutral trade. That was a macro event that preceded major, major uh, uh, events. We did peg collapses on the euro, Swiss franc. These are big macro calls. And those get me almost more excited than, you know, a, a four hourly or a daily pattern that uh, ends up coming to that. We almost expect that. I'm not to sound um we again we expect things to not work as well um but this is this is the the analogy here if you look at 2021 uh and i just get the 10 year here we go we're almost there lining them up under each other there is a tendency for the tightening of rates on the 10 year this whole period boom 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 bosh has been very very galvanizing for the dollar but it took a while before it took off there was a bottoming on these yields here. We had the whole proliferation of credit that was the six or seven trillion. And you started really to move here around about that, that period. And that was coincided with this macro HVF that we called on the 10 year treasury. We said the yields are gonna run on the treasury. Um, and we expected this dollar turn here because we said if it runs this low, we're going to be going into uh, possible bear territory for dollar and it's not our expectation. So the, the dollar milkshake theory had was right in principle, just Brent was wrong in timing and bringing it. Uh, and we said, I, we, we suspect that the timing will come now. So this entire dollar bull period, that was a very good time to be net short crypto. And we were net short crypto. We were net long the USD JPY, which is now going the other way. We were net uh, long the the dollar over the euro. So we were short euro USD. Uh, we, we also suggested euro Swiss franc for when the dollar rested. All of those things have had the benefit of a sustained multi-year. You're talking about 18 months going on two-year trend. Um, so when I see this, uh, we've got a, a very big time frame on here. If I just drop both of these down now that I've aligned them to roughly the daily, and this one also to the daily, um, you will see that this is very, very similar charts. And what's happened is this one, and we we spoke about this in our premium community, the marketsniper.com, for those interested, that there was a real descending yet basing grind line. And that's typical of something that is being allowed to skid, but there is some bid that comes in if it goes too far. So it's not just the capitulation and a man pees off the roof, absolute spiller, thriller all the way from Manila. It's a case of a skid, a little bit of a bounce, and then a skid and a bounce. So that points to there is bid showing up every now and then. So you've got bid showing up here. You've got bid showing up there. You can argue that was part of it over there. And now you've got bid showing up there. That is what we call a falling wedge. And you've had a bump. You've had a classic return move, which is typical, rounded basing, and you're making new highs. Now, if you have a look at this with me, you can see this again, very much playing out over here. It just hasn't manifested to the fullness extent 
you had a big spill here on the Dixie here. You had a little bit of bid come in, tiny bit of bid come in, bit of bids, bit of bids, and here you are now. So I would argue you're half a stage or a stage behind what's actually happening on the 10 year. And you can see again, there you had, again, you had a bit of a arguably uh, flagging like structure. And you can see it's happening here. Yeah, the correlation is absolutely apparent. Um, and you've also, for yeah. the Dixie, um, if you look at the Dixie pairs, like the Great British Pound, uh, or the Dixie uh, US dollar, Great British Pound, or really any of the others, arguably maybe not the uh, JPY pair right now, you've got this DNA of a, a falling wedge across all of them. Um, so are you very much of the kind of thinking that the, the, the dollar is going to reaffirm? Um, and it's just had a pullback after having an okay. amazing move. So that's a good question because what I'm saying to you is it's not, everybody is dollar negative now. So I was seeing the tweets, the natural place for the Euro is 110 and the yen, 110 yen to the dollar. I've seen the Euro uh, up at 120. I've seen all these guys yeah. uh, getting very plucky on dollar weakness. Everybody is a momentum chaser. They're all super strong and super confident and make these absolutist type statements, usually just before. It's kind of like when Bitcoin was at 60K and everyone was 250K by the end of the year. Um, it's absolutely, it's a standard thing that you see with, uh, when you are global macro like I am, uh, it's quite typical to see. Uh, but just let's finish showing you these how beautifully they played out. Even the bump here on the Dixie correlated with the you know the bump there. You can see this. This is very very tight. Look at this beautiful very low vol. We said during this period you are absolutely in the right place because there was a little dip on the dollar here. And, and people freaked out on the dollar longs on Twitter. Yeah, you said don't make money and now it's gone down. Uh, and, you know, just with a couple of um, days down, one, two, three, four, because they chased in late, they added to their position along the way, they did something that made them emotional. Um, and, you know, I said, look, that's it there. That's nothing. And this is a very stable, low vol climb. So that was a, obviously the dollar is more volatile to the bond markets are inherently dull and low vol relatively to FX markets generally. But nonetheless, you can see there was a, there was still a channel a little bit broader and it had its pop out the top there as it did there. But that was super stable. And I was saying, as long as it's low vol like that and inching up, you just stay dollar long. People don't, you know, on macro, everybody wants to be flexing and doing something new every day. You just stay dollar long and you don't wet the bed when that happens. Now we've had a falling wedge and a basing. So your question was, is, is, is the dollar coming back? So it is going to come back to a degree, but not to the, the level and the rate of pace that it had before. So the key thing about your question is, uh, that the originally we had a macro HVF on the dollar and that was your dominant trade. And it was really, really powerful. Now you're going to get a bit more ebb and flow and a little bit of everything. This was your Dixie going back up to that bigger time frame. You were trading this structure. And that's the value of trading HVF method. Uh, hence why we, you know, we make it available to people to do. You were trading essentially this structures breakout run from here to there we gave a target of 111 we tightened it to about 110.3 but essentially you got from those lows that move now that gradient and rate of ascent still got a whole bunch of people wetting the bed when it did that and when it did that and when it did this you know who'd got in early but generally if they held to they made money that was a very steep ascent. We call that the line of efficiency. How much time in the market and how much juice are you getting for that? You aren't going to do a line of a similar rate of ascent for a similar duration, in my opinion. So that was the gift of this entire structure that start, was made from this entire bull market into there, which also was a, a HVF before it, by the way which was why this wasn't the first HVF, which was why you shouldn't have held on. And in the same way, I'm talking about the guys that said, you're a USD. 
as this melt up was happening on the dollar, the dollar bulls were coming in and saying 120 Dixie, never mind 150 Dixies possible. You know, it was all like everybody, momentum shoots. And that's how people, and these guys then get known as the dollar bulls. When you were first and you said 111, they sort of, they now, because they've arrived late by claim stake jumping on you, they get to be a, a certain. And I'm like, good luck with that. What happens? You run the target. There's no, there's a short blow off period of overperformance to 114. And then you have a proper, proper hit back. Where's the guy who said 150? I took a picture of what he said on, yep. you know, on Twitter and the other guy on 120. They didn't do uh, the analysis. They had no basis for it. So we have real basis for our trade and the targets on thumb sucks and it's not pissing contests. This was the reason. Yeah. That's why you got that run. And that's why you got that run. That's why it was a real key opportunity. Bull run. Now you've just had the bull run. Well, look what you got. The dollar did go higher, but it was up, down, up, deeper down. You're wrong, bear market, yeah. you know? So this is the sort of game. That's a much more different market to trade. And within all of that, I also see for us coming a um, major demand destroying event. So they're going to, you know, you're going to have the stuffing ripped out of this economy. They're going to exercise their power again and all of that. That's likely to lead to the, a degree of dollar spike strength. But when it leads to spike strength, eventually they get coerced into proliferation and they go into a proliferation model. That was when the, the news started to break. That was the spike strength. And then we got the first inverted in a new trend. Down, 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 over performance. They printed six or seven trillion. That's the technical marrying up with the fundamental. But you don't get to hear the fundamental until they squawk it out of the likes of CNBC uh, and some Fed meetings. So that that is in essence where we are. So I would be very wary on being dollar negative right now. Not because I think it's going to go up the same pace at the same rate just because it's already had quite a violent correction and the interest rates, as I've illustrated, are a leading indicator for the thing. You're getting closer to breaking a debt Ponzi scheme by upping the rates. That means you're getting closer to everybody panicking into the dollar again. Yep. It's quite simple, really. And the chart is showing you. And it showed you when I split the screen with the 10-year above and that, that you're actually looking at the future dollar price behavior when you're looking at the 10-year almost. So, I mean, um, that's that's the nutshell. But it doesn't mean you go back to one-way trade pumpamentals dollar like you had with the HVF. Um, that means you're going to be more right than wrong generally. But it's going to be up and down and there will be events. But if we have the full fear, there will be a surge moment in my anticipation. But the difference is there might be more of that leaking into gold, silver, as people are getting more and more aware that it's coming to the end of the stage. And I want to highlight this to your listeners. All in crypto, uh, listen to me. Uh, our pure gold link in our YouTube videos, the, the director, Joshua Searle, spoke to me and had a 700% month-on-month increase on insider bankers buying gold. There's been a lot of that, actually. We looked at also, certainly in Asia, um, there was a huge uptick. In fact, in the past year, I think we've seen a jump in actual central banks buying gold like we haven't seen almost ever. Um, I'm sure I can get that link off you and leave that in the description on uh, this channel and it'll re-divert it to, 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 to yours. But that's fascinating. 700% in the past month, did you say? Yeah. What's what going on? Is insider C-class people inside banks deeply concerned of which they can't recount everything they told them. And some people said there's things I can't even tell you, but I'm I'm in. Yeah. And this, uh, so it, it, A, they got given some information they don't wish to disclose on account of agreeing that with the person they were speaking to or B, someone said, I can't tell you stuff, but believe you me. Uh, wow. So, wow. That's absolutely so, fascinating. And it's not so like they're just telling that them. link into the dollar. But I think the pipe, the blood, the iota is your main ar ar artery running down from the heart. 
But as you get lower down, there's plenty of forks that go to the left leg, the right leg, uh, and different parts of the anatomy. The pipe that's leading to the gold part of your anatomy is going to be fattening and siphoning off a lot more of that blood, where blood equals the energy and the value of money and creation that you've done. And I have literally done uh, a large strip out of fiat for multiple location, multiple uh, bullion investments. And actually, I've just completed a video, which guys are welcome to watch on the marketsniper.com on uh, how well I think Platinum actually is going to do uh, and giving them a Delta neutral trade, similar to the oil gold trade. They can go watch that if they like that, uh, involving Platinum as the long side uh, and shorting something else that is also an industrial uh, uh, metal. So anyway. That's so, fascinating. Uh, uh, do you, do you, so you've also highlighted, I've seen you've been highlighting a uh, Bitcoin gold chart where you've yes. essentially looked at the fact that gold is outperforming Bitcoin and actually there's a lot lower targets for um, Bitcoin against gold. Uh, it, it, it does really strike me that we've kind of moved from this just inflate everything to let's go to the lifeboat in the form of uh, real value. And it seems yes. like gold is quite a um, a champion of real value. I mean, if you I know you're into your Austrian econo uh, economics, Gold's always been the sort of poster child of real value. You know, it's it, it's been, they call it God's money, right? So it oh, is absolutely. very interesting that during this time period where we have so much volatility and just, you know, Bank of Japan surprising us last night, that you also have central banks and normal people running to gold and silver. There's got to be something in that. And I think you, you, you've highlighted that very well. So you brought up two very interesting things. So I'm going to do a short dive on gold and Bitcoin for you, because at the end of the day, you're a crypto channel and a value channel. And I'm going to show you something on gold. And I'm also going to do it. it you know, you're going to notice something. So here's the target of Bitcoin. We called this first cup gold nugget. That was another macro, very lengthy by Bitcoin timeframes uh major move and said this is one of those rare moments where people who are net leveraged longs will benefit by doing so. We don't call that on a sustained basis. Just be net leveraged long, lock up and forget for a period. Right the way up to our target on the Bitcoin. So what are we looking at? Bitcoin USD, I took Bitstamp because of the length of history and the gold futures. This HVF method absolutely nailed the top of this. And in actual fact, the 69K was not much higher, which is the difference here. It was very much a double top against gold because already what the energy it took to get you against the dollar the gold was now already moving so actually you weren't making a new high on uh, against gold you're looking at essentially the new claimant to store a value of digital use case versus the original claimant of store of value because neither of them are transactional we don't pay in gold coins and we no one's using bitcoin to pay for things on any significant scale. So this is an unbelievable target shout. That would have got you out very close to the 64K. You would have essentially been short gold during this period. You could have got in a tiny bit earlier, by the way, around here, there was a squeeze within a squeeze. So around 5.69 ounces of gold per Bitcoin. And you would have run it up to almost 35, 34 and a half. Then you would have been out. You would have had a double top a, a kind of structure and I will drop down this time frames and show you the amazing value of HVF uh, method and cross market analysis like this which we do so after that it, that that is the key call that was when you were meant to be leveraged long uh, Bitcoin you should have just been against anything against the dollar against anything um, then when we drop into what actually occurred afterwards uh, and we have a look at it. I'll go first three day before I go two day, so we can see that a little bit better. What you'll see is we got the head and shoulder here that we called as well, and we we're involved in that. And you only learn about how to do complex head and shoulders, especially when you get rising wedges into the structures as you did like that when you were with us. And we said, you're going to go down to 30K. You did that. Look at that perfect target calling using head and shoulders with HVF wow. method on cross valuation analysis gold the other store of value we said on this falling wedge that you would actually break up 
and that these continual dips, and it was quite an anxious period because we got tested, we got tested. It looked like it was about a spill and we we're going to be wrong. And then pump up you go. Then bang, you've actually got multiple head and shoulders of value in here that still have to perform. This, and I call it the blue head and shoulders because on all my other charts against the dollar, I've highlighted this. This blue head and shoulder, which actually represents the 69 final run, which had that flag there, that got made here. That's why you took so long pausing here. Yep. That was a key head and shoulder period made. That was essentially the run from the 69K high. That was another head and shoulder call. There's lots of smaller fractals that are very advanced. I'm not going to go into explaining all of them. But then you actually have a bear flag, which we have two readings for. And that one, the most bearish one, is taking you to the funnel, which is why I've been talking about a return to five ounce gold Bitcoin when you're currently at nine. And when you were here, you were at 12. And when it was at 55K and we were concerned, you were at 27. So if you just pivoted out of crypto into gold during that period, you would have been doing substantially better than all the hodls. And this is our key point. Everybody goes, traders lose money, generally 90%, 87, 78. We aren't trading. We aren't doing things on a daily basis. Capturing three, it's sometimes as low as one, but it can be one, three, maybe five key directional movements on major asset classes that are different, yet are supposedly fulfilling the same role simultaneously, utilizing HVF method, and you leave the trade on. You could have just gone long gold, short Bitcoin. Yeah. And you would have gone from 34 and a half ounces and you're sitting at nine. You're probably going to end up at five. Wow. Wow. And it's interesting that you have a target right back from where all the stimulus started. In so fact, that's it. I'll yeah. change color just to uh, clarify that because that's caught your eye. Uh, the orange. This is... The strongest targets are the HVF, and then second, I would probably say uh, a distant second, the head and shoulders. This is a flag, which is a reasonable targeting tool, but don't over uh, give over gravitas. If it, it can fail, anything can fail, and so can this. But this is on a geometric, and that will be a funnel, and it takes you straight back to a key support level. That doesn't even mean if it did go there, that that would even be a bottom. First of all, I'm not saying it's going there. We don't know. It's a possibility and probabilities. But that even if it did, it doesn't mean that's a bottom. It just means it would be a sustained area of support. It could be a very potential bottom because of the funnel. It means you would have round tripped the entire COVID dollar weakness spell. And that's a big bearish point for me for crypto because Rarely do you go all the way and come 100% down. Imagine at a halvening cycle, you had a high and then you went to a low that was the same as the low of before the halvening cycle. That should concern you. Yep. This is getting a little bit more that way. Um, the the, inter the, the, the interesting dollar. thing, I think, with, with, with it round tripping is if you look at the likes of ARC, which you've highlighted, another good one is GBTC, which really is only institutional used. They have all round tripped pretty much um, the entirety of the COVID stimulus package. And people think round tripping doesn't happen. They think it can never go back. You know, it's done this. And then they sit shock and awe uh, and, uh, and they gutted. This was the chart you were referring to. I was just getting it up. Let's bring it back from the other screen. This is what's happened. This isn't the latest arc chart. It's made a new low, by the way. Wow. It's gone through that low. So it's down there. It's at 32 now. When this was taken, it was at 40. And we were we actually gave, we have a an eight and a nine dollar target for it. Oh wow. I mean Kathy this, Wood. Yes, it can be believe so don't, don't, this isn't a beat up on crypto. He just hates crypto and he doesn't no, believe no. in it and he wants to beat up. This is the world. This is the world deflating because of inflation and uh as, uh, so much. Asset price hyperinflation caused by fiat proliferation now being unwind. You pop, you know, you bump an obscene amount of air into a really big durable balloon. Um, you know, when you let it out, it's got a lot of air that's got to come out of the bag, uh, back into you know, into the cylinder or Debt whatever. Markets. You, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it, it, this is fascinating. I, I think that this, you know, for me, I'm very much set on more downside for the crypto space. Um, but I think that that has a lot to do with, you know, if you look at personal savings rates, if you look at the environment we're in, it's why largely with all these rallies, we've been in the notion that they don't get sustained. Are yeah. the Fed at your back at the moment saying, okay, this rally can grow arms and legs? No, they're, they're the complete opposite of what yeah. they have been. And, and that needs to be taken very seriously. And I, I can't help but feel, you, you know, you, um, I watched your review on BlackRock's outlook for 2023. I mean, when did the term a new world order become mainstream economic commentary? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this this was the stuff of conspiracy theory nuts, so to speak, only a couple of years ago. Now they are coining the phrase a new world order. I mean, that was a fascinating report. Well, it's, been, it's a very old term and it's not it was coined very long time ago. And now they're using it uh, with great regularity. Yeah, the, the one thing that I also found interesting with BlackRock's report was they said that in order for inflation to get back in line, we need to see a 2% drop in GDP. That's pain. And you think that crypto or stocks or I even, if I'm being honest, I think gold's probably going to have on the paper price yeah. go down with because everybody's going to be running for the exit, I think. I think this is coming in the year that we're moving into. Well, there's going to be no real money if you have your money taken out of your bank. Let's finish this point I wanted to yes, make with sure. this chart and then I'll take it away. Um, and this was a bit of a Bitcoin maxis, a little bit of a troll, but it's also there's real relevance behind this. Um, this is Bitcoin in gold color, the orange, uh, and that's the ARC chart. And what I was highlighting as a speculator tech in ETF, highly speculative deep you know balls deep into the metaverse and all nonsense and she actually increased the risk of her profile instead of decreasing it she just failed to read the trend um this is uh her chart the candles and what actually happened is this the claim i'm making is arc is in essence let's just put this in a proper color uh so that you can see where i'm operating uh arc is in essence a low beta that means less volatile proxy advance early mover for bitcoin so that's going to upset a lot of bitcoin people um but it, it's it's more because it's the truth hurts. it's more it's more of because it's speculative a uh, high risk tech uh and bitcoin is being categorized as that no matter what michael saylor says about pristine collateral the people with money get to decide unfortunately He's only some of the money. He's a lot of money, but he's in terms of all the money, he's a minute as well. He's, you know, he's as, as insignificant as I am uh, in that sense. So in terms of the people with the money, Bitcoin is being treated in this period, not forever, but in this period under review, post the COVID March 20 lows, as a lagging high beta proxy for an, a, a failing, in my opinion, macro head and shoulders, Kathy Wood mocked tech uh, ETF, uh, speculative. And here's why. So watch this. There's the Bitcoin moving up. There's Kathy Wood moving up. Bitcoin pumpamentals. Kathy Wood tops before. Leading indicator, lower beta. Kathy Wood tops here. Bitcoin still has FOMO retailer momentum carries on running, not the smart money. Down. Localized low here. Bitcoin localized low. That was your falling wedge that I was telling you about. A re-rally for Kathy. A re-rally for Bitcoin. Everybody FOMO massively makes a marginally higher high. So on the ups overperforms, which is a bit like silver to gold. It's almost like Bitcoin is silver to, dare I ever say, Kathy Wood's gold uh, <laughs> with, a, with a big laugh. Um, and then since then, that was a localized high for Kathy. She was trending down. The next, she had a small rally. Bitcoin was still hanging on, but Bitcoin had been lagging and holding on. It did a dip, another dip. This was already diverging to the downside. People will say yes, because people were losing faith in Kathy. But yeah, it was already diverging to the downside. Call it what you like. 
It's diverging to the downside. Bitcoin now is chronic catch up to do. Yep. Smashes it down. You get a rally high here, a minor rally on uh, ARK. You've had a minor rally here on uh, Bitcoin. You have this sell off now and then a localized low. Bitcoin carried on. That was the, that was the sell off there. Kathy Wood went sideways for a bit. Bitcoin went sideways for a bit, had a minor step down. Bitcoin had a huge step down. Some will say, but, 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 FTX, but, but, but. That, that's actually come here. That, that's not even on this chart, by the way, because that's September. FTX yep. was all November. Then you get this rally uh, here, rally highs. You see Kathy Wood rally high first, Bitcoin rally high. All these things have lagged. The localized lows and the localized highs. And the big divergence that warned that Bitcoin, you shouldn't trust these new highs here, was the divergence in how Bitcoin is being treated as a tech instrument, uh, a high beta tech instrument, was in this failure to make a new high. Now, this was only up until September. This is an old chart. I did the annotations um, for a newsletter that we put out. And it was shared amongst the community at the time. If I bring up ARC today as if it's still holding, that doesn't mean it necessarily still has to hold. Things hold until they don't. You yeah. know, people get very angry when, you know, they want uh, something for, uh, for generations and millenniums. They want a golden rule to be true forever. Things hold until they don't. But at the moment, that's how the market is perceiving uh, Bitcoin and crypto. If we go over a look at ARC now, versus that diagram, it's closed below 32. So when you were looking at it at September, let's go uh, give you maybe a little bit less of the big pumpamentals. You can see this huge head and shoulders. If we go here, we were here, September. Okay. And it's dying. And this is the neckline for me, 37.50. So it's churned, it broke with momentum, churned, broadened and spilt. Rising wedge spill. So this is a nasty structure of great doom loop in it. And that doesn't mean the metaverse isn't going to happen. That doesn't mean all these things happen. That just means you're going through the dot-com boom cycle. That's all. And, and you're going to kill 99% of everything. And that which is controlled by Vanguard and BlackRock and is intended for you, Amazon, your one world, new world order retailer online, uh, um, uh, what's the other ones, Schmoogle, Apple, etc. That is binning it. If I just look at that, I want to jump and get short. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm only, I'm already short. Look at the rejection candle there that tried to retain the neckline. That is an absolute binner of a candle. What is the follow through candle? Candlestick analysis will tell you what follows is important. Did it run the low? It absolutely did. That's where it is. I don't even know if the US market's open yet. No, we've so got a little while. Just, this is just on Monday's uh, day trade. It's a uh, it's a weekly it's a weekly chart. That's one day. It's one day, and it already looks like a weekly good channel. How will it finish the week? Where does it go? Nine 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 eight point seven nine. We've got a, a dual draw, two multiple, two neckline options. It is an absolute throwdown. It is an absolute throwdown. When was it lost? Any time that valuation. You're going back to 2016, I'm thinking. Wow. Wow. And and you can almost use R. Uh, lower. Lower than wow. 216. So wow. I've only got it uh, Genesis uh, commencing 1853. So something happens. It either gets closed and they give money back and people get a pittance back. It, it gets bought out. It gets renamed. It, the, the, the whole rating gets done. But Or if it stays operating in its current form, it trades single digit i've got a nine nine wow. as my highest target there single digit on something that in 2016 was 13 dollars and you've gone through inflation and you've got super pumpamentals and this is what was driving me bonkers because this was a banner stick but it was very similar for a lot of tech stocks just this is the most extreme example about david hunter's yeah. you know at some point we're gonna have a blow off in the equity market and i'm like and what part of this is not a blow off for the equity market on seven trillion of stimulus? I know what, what you, part what, what of you that want. move there is not uh, does not meet the criteria of a blow off. You know, trading at one point uh, as low as thirty one and going up to one hundred and sixty. 
I mean, uh, and, and there's the others are less extreme, but they're all there. This is a death spiral for me. If I were Kathy Wood, if I was anybody invested in that, I would be mortified by that chart. I would be pissing in my pants. And, and you, I would you, be closing. You could kind of use Kathy Wood's uh, ARK Invest, which is what you are doing, the ETF, as a way to look at what's more clued up money doing than Bitcoin. Because with that second high that Bitcoin had at the 69s, you've got probably a lot more retail driving that and involved in that than you will the likes of Athy, uh, Kathy Wood's ARK. So I, I think what's happened is that um, the, I've seen an article that about 85% that this could completely incorrect i'm guessing a number now but it was a substantial number that's about 85 percent. someone in your comments who's watching this please put it in the actual answer i read somewhere all got in around here and are deeply underwater is this retail or the majority of people that well when you talk about people and you get lots of people with smaller holdings it's normally retail um the big smart money i think would have already been getting out long time ago but uh the bulk of her clients are deeply underwater so everyone goes you know but look how good it's done there's very few people left that were in here that are, are still in here the people that got in here are the ones that are bag holding here so, I mean, there's a, a, a minuscule percentage. I, I think it's sub 20. I think it's like that. Wow. But I stand corrected on the number because I'm not clear what it was. It might even be worse. It might even be 10% and 90% are underwater. I don't know. Uh, but someone will know. But it's very, very few. So she's sitting with a very disgruntled, um, generally. To say the uh, least. <laughs> yeah. To say the least. And, and this, this, is the, this, this is the thing, you know, that there's no reason that I can find literally none at all where i expect things to turn around here for the cryptocurrency market it's set it's 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 just you know it's just a case of waiting for it i mean you're pulling up tesla at the moment if how do you tesla feel about gets, them apples if tesla gets I mean, down to 106 what do you think crypto's doing it's going straight with it because it's acted the, in the exact same manner in fact there's <laughs> less in terms of dividends that you're going to get from it I, I was I brought that up intentionally because a lot of people will say, well, Kathy Wood, you know, who cares about Kathy Wood and ETF? That's a shit coin, the equivalent of a shit coin in the equity markets, et cetera. Well, uh, this was a half a trillion valuation, possibly more up top here. I don't know how far he got towards a trillion. I'm not sure he ever made the number. Uh, I don't think he did, but uh, it was half a trillion. I'm pretty sure up top there. This is also a nasty skid for Elon, and it's also a head and shoulder. Uh, and remember, the target isn't the end. Uh, on head and shoulders, that's the one thing. Head and shoulders has a lottery ticket for overperformance put in your hand. I mean, I will show you, uh, I think it's Meta. And uh, no, um, which one was it? Amazon. Okay. There's a head and shoulder. And this is you. Amazon is retail. Wow. <laughs> this is how it's looking for you. Uh, so let's take those lines off. Uh, so the target ain't the end, but it's often a good place to get out. And this is how we do reversal head and shoulders. Get out there. You avoid the re-ride and the loss of confidence and all the carry cost of re-riding all the way back to your neckline, assuming you shorted at the neckline there. Yeah. So you, you avoid the round trip on your P&L where you go from green, 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 big green, big green, bigger green, biggest green, not so big green, not so big green, smaller green, smaller green, zero. <laughs> you want to avoid that. that. So you get out there and guess what? You get all brassy and you're in good shape then. When it goes back to the neckline, you say, that's some rally. I think I'll jump back in again because the head and shoulders isn't just the target. It's often a secular turn. So you get the lottery ticket for the overperformance. You short it again at the neckline. But I'm telling you, there's not a way in hell you're shorting it if you didn't close at the target. Yep. You're sick as a canary if you didn't close at the target. That's the absolute oh, God's honest truth. So you close at the target. You ride the bullshit and the pumper mentals and the, the, the fake politicians doing whatever, the Fed and all of that. You jump back in short there and you smash it down. You get your target a second time plus two times two and going further. And now you're still waiting for the downside risk, the end game crasher mentals. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that, guys. Yeah. People think I'm a misery porn artist. I'm trying to make you happy. <laughs> They're sending it. They're giving it to you. 
The big short is the game. This is where the money's at. But you've got to understand, you've got to have confidence, you've got to have an understanding of what's going on, you've got to have a methodology, and you've got to have a process. Doing mindset videos. People all want to manage the outcome. I think I'll give trading a go. Wrong. You've got to, there's three concentric circles. They go like this. Uh, and, and this is what everybody gets uh, wrong, is that they, they think they can manage outcome. The outcome is the outer circle. The next circle, I'll change color, is the process. And then the final circle, we'll get one more color, is the identify, the identification. I identify as transgender. So what I'm saying in essence here is everybody wants the outcome. You all want the outcome. Outcome is make money in the markets, outcome. So you start working on the outcome. That's the outer circle. You don't get to work from the outer circle in. It's not like that. You fix it from the core outwards. You fix it from the core outwards. It has to come like this. From the middle out, what are the other two? What are the other two? You've got to have process. How do I do it? How do I make this money? How do I do it? That's process. You need the process. That's HVF method. For me, you do something else. You want to do some moving average crossover. Good luck. Um, but that would be your process. Uh, and then you have uh, your identification. Your identification, who are you? You know, what do you identify as? And that's in there, identity. You need to identify as a trader. This is what I do. I am a trader. You can't say I'm going to give trading a go. That is, you're something else and you're going to have, that's like me saying, oh, I'll, I'll have a, I'll, I'll give, uh, I'll pop over to the circus and give tightrope walking a go. Um, you know, it's just, it's, Good uh, luck. <laughs> no, you won't. Um, so, you know, imagine how that works out, broken back. Um, so the point is, I am a trader and uh, or I am becoming a trader if you feel like you're telling a lie, if you self-identify as a trader and you're not there. But then you've got to say, do I have a process? And then you will start to have outcomes when you execute on a solid probability-based process. There is no guaranteed winner process. And then you start to get outcomes. Everybody wants to start working on the circle from the outside in. They just want the outcome. They just keep coming this way and you can't do it. Uh, but at the moment, the markets are giving you the biggest gift and everybody's miserable because you only want sunshine days. You want permanent days. You want to be on the North Pole when it's summer and you have six months of da daylight, but then you never rest. You get exhausted. Actually, Nighttime, winter, they're all good. They're all good for making money. Shorts, the big short. Michael Burry's never made as much money in such a fast time as he did there, even though they cocked him around. Um, you absolutely shouldn't shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, and this is the thing, you know, one man's uh, trash is another man's treasure. And what's going on right now, there's a, there's a, a real opportunity in shorting all of this. Um, all the links to Francis's content um, and where you can find Francis and explore what he does a little bit more will be in the description. I think that's an amazing segment that you've just gone on to in regards to being a trader because I have never found anything as hard as trying to trade. It's a road filled with frustration. If I'm being totally honest, and I've found the recent environment that we've been in pretty hard um, because, and I don't, I'm a big believer that a workman should never blame his tools, but I think with the sort of environment that we're in, unless you have the kind of method that Francis is talking about here, you're going to find it very hard to navigate on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, with what came out with the JPY or, uh, or the BOJ yesterday. That was the night time oh, for me. You've just triggered me again because you had two parts to your original question two or three times back yeah. and I took you on a journey uh, there. The other thing you mentioned was Japan. So we mentioned Bitcoin, ARK and a number of things. So here was something, and I took my eye off this. So I'm not claiming it, but I'd already done uh, this entire draw. I was just updating the community, and I was like, man, we already drew this. Wow. I clicked on the 10-year, and we had, in draw, a major upside on rates. And I was a bit confused by that. This draw was done a long time ago. <laughs> we wow. had a 
major upside on the 10-year Japanese rates. And I can tell you I have a target through 5%. So it's going to go through 5 in my opinion. And guess what happened? It got to the second interim, pullback, rebound. What do we tell you about our interims? It's a point where the market rests. Squeezy, squeezy, Japanesey of all places to have a squeezy, squeezy, <laughs> Japanesey. Second interim on the 10-year Japanese debt. What do you get? Pumper mentals run. There she goes. There she goes. Look at that breakout. The rates have to go up. So we were secretly. I wish I'd spoken this and done because I should spend more time being a marketer and, and talking about social proof because I should have gone on and said, we're calling the Japanese are going to let the 25 go. We've got, and this is the first upside in a new trend as well. So this could mean that goes beyond this. This can overperform. So we've given you a number A above half a percent. So we, it's our view, it will get there. Again, we can never guarantee it. It's a probability essay based assessment, and it'll go beyond five by a reasonable amount. And as a first structure in a new trend, it will probably be forced, forced higher. However, post the target, you're probably going to get a lot of pushbacks and churn, and it's not a great time to be in for a bit as well. So you, you've heard that. And I was we went back after these happenings. I went and looked at it, and I said, I haven't been looking at this. And you know what my mistake was? I just never set any alerts. And then I'd spotted this, that it had done this. And it's all wow. pausing right on our second interim where we drawn it. That's, That's fascinating. So there you see it sitting, the 10-year rate called by HVF method, decisions that people made that got interacted today that were probably thought about or discussed and insiders started shifting long before. The forensic detective is a real process that gives you. And not only does it tell you where the target is, it tells you where it's likely to rest and to stand to and to stick to it and when you'll have a tough time. And it first ran there. And then you could see it battled with it for a while, had one blow off, and then it had a, a, a real pullback. Oh, by the way, where did it real pullback to? Our flat top uh, uh, draw of yeah. uh, resistance that has now turned support, and then went super low vol, even in that little low. And then whoop, out of the blue, you get lucky. You know what? I, you know what happened to me? Trading for me. You know what you just said about trading was so difficult. Man, did I ever feel, I started this game ages ago. I felt like the unluckiest man in the goddamn yep. until I had a process and I was trading HVF method. Then I just felt the market loves me. I, I coined the phrase, the market loves us. The market loves us. You get gifts like this, pumper mentals on a day. Now I'm not in this, didn't trade it. I forgot to look at it. I hadn't said an alert. I, I it's something that was called that we missed. We were watching other things. I've had a lot on my plate recently. Da -da -da -da, excuses, excuses. This got called. This the, got called the, by the method. We'd even done the draw. This, this everything to it. This is one one of many reasons why I love having you on because you are a real trader. When and and I, I mean that in the fullest sense I can possibly mean it. You know, I I've been about now for obviously started with crypto. Um, but when you look at the kind of public speakers that speak about trading, you only have to have done a little bit of trading to realize that they ain't it. They're not the real deal. They don't even really understand the concepts of what they're talking about. Whereas, you know, when you see all these people bringing up EMAs and, and rainbow charts and all, it's just madness. Whereas somebody like yourself cuts through the bullshit you've done it and do it on a daily basis it's very very impressive and, the, and and you're so right when you start trading you feel like the market is hunting you and it, i thought that someone had a recorder yeah. and they just knew where my stops were they knew they knew how to get me out then it would reverse and go and do exactly what yeah. i thought it would do it was almost like god was punishing me and yeah. i've not felt like that in decades but i remember it so distinctly i wondered how i could be so goddamn bad but it wasn't contraindicative. In often cases, I was right. I was just stops in the wrong place, everything in the wrong place, lack of process. But I didn't have, I was so far away. It felt like I was so far away. A small change, full submission to a process, that single change, that is absolutely, and, and forget me personally as the originator of this, this method kills. Yep. This yep. method kills. You, we called that 25 would be the new holding point for the Japanese. This is all co this is all them holding this down. None of this stuff is worth getting such a low yield. They were holding it here. 
and it was our second interim. And now they're going to hold it somewhere around here. And it's going to shoot to five, two, three. And you're going to get a similar piece of price action here, over here. And then you'll see me on YouTube making a call that the yields are going to spike on Japan. And Japan's essentially going to be bust. It might be the thing that breaks it. And you say, how did he guess that he got lucky? Uh, and you'll see something similar. And you'll see a, a breakout like that. That's how you call the collapse of the oil market. And you, and you call another commodity to go up in spite of a pandemic. Before you even knew it was a pandemic because you had carnival we call we're gonna we're gonna blog this by the way not because because i don't know how to market properly we need to show and it's not personal it's you can do this too absolutely it's the method you can do this too you know you, 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 you macro just, technical calls sorry to, technical sorry to interrupt calls. you there but you, you you spoke about submitting to a method you know you've heard aa haven't you for alcoholics anonymous yes it's kind of similar you need to um submit to a process to help you not be an alcoholic you need to submit as a trader to a process to help you not lose and you need to have faith it's amazing what you're doing it's why we love having you on the show because you know you are the originator of hvf method and it's rare that something like this comes around um, and, and has such a degree of accuracy like we've highlighted throughout this video it, it it's just fascinating and, and and markets really are filled with gold the determining factor of whether you um, make that gold or not is is yourself. Um, I'm yeah. a big believer in that. And and all the technical levels you're showing us, is it just a coincidence at this point that they're all playing out? Absolutely not. I mean, it, how can it possibly be? <laughs> it's fascinating no, stuff. And I love the way it gives you a little bit more than two and a half because to try hide that they're going to doing it at exactly two and a half, they let it run a little bit through and then they keep it back. You actually yep. traded on a spike that far. And this is going to give you exact say more than five, uh, 500. And had you taken this trade, by the way, doubling the rates, that's a halvening on the bond value in <laughs> essence. <laughs> so, you know, you look at this trade, this was for a hedge fund trading bonds. This was an unbelievable uh, exercise. You could have got in on our midpoint there. You could be there. You could be just on this and it's going to come. Wow. You could have been there. You could get an 11. If you waited for the, the just in time entry and you took it there and you put the full stop, that's still uh, going to be uh, a nine. And if you went for the full stop to below it there, you're on about a 5.4. And this is calling events. They forced to let rates go up. Otherwise, their currency keeps getting kicked. Yep. And it's, and let me tell you, the USDN sold off hard. And I think it was discussed that they were going to do this. And it started to get priced in. So if you look beforehand. at the... Beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beforehand. They all cheats. They cheats. I call it the forensic detective for insider trading for a reason. They liars and cheats. Bloody hell. The vice chairman of BlackRock was the Swiss National Bank head whose wife was trading the Swiss fucking franc. Listen to what I just told you. They are criminals, frauds, and corrupt bastards. This is why this works. Because you're looking at the footsteps in the sand. That's what I mean by the footsteps in the sand. And it's the heavy footsteps. It's the elephant steps in, this, in the beach sand that you can spot. They're there to be seen. You need process method. You have to learn to love to become a charter and adhere to process and the money comes. Love process, outcome comes. Chase outcome, outcome runs. Get it? I am becoming a trader. I adhere to process. I am learning and learning to just love the process of seeing the future in charts. If you can look me in the eyes and take that on, you can do everything I'm doing. This is not an ego trip for me personally. This is a HVF method program that anyone can bloody well do and implement. And there's a ton of people already doing it. And they're there. And you'll talk to one if you call them. You book a call. I can't take all the calls. Sorry. I, I, They'll do it. And they're awesome. <laughs> I absolutely love. There was, a, it might have been a broker from um, one of the gold and silver uh, places that you use and he said and he was inquiring about hvf method because he goes all my yeah, clients are it, 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 it's amazing i think i think that you've really got to appreciate something like this when it when it's on the table and there are going to be links in the description to everything um so this is brutal what's happening on I the can US see it. it's, end it's gone down significantly it more. looks like it's gone lower uh it's actually i mean we are watching it happen 
And I this could be a final capitulation before bounce or head and shoulders. Alternative scenario. Yep, there it is. I looked at that this morning and thought, and you know what? You've got the sort of precursors for that head and shoulders with just how harsh this slam down's been. Yeah, not everything is a head and shoulder that has three bumps in the road. Um, it's very important to that. And you should not have, uh, we've spoken a fair amount of head and shoulders. We are inherently generally continuation traders because that's usually what happens. But I know how to spot a reversal because it's not healthy for a continuation trader uh, to not learn that as a skill. Uh, and I will certainly say um, that is a brutal, brutal sell. -off. So, you know, that uh, the, the dollar might still have a bit to go before it comes. But can I tell you, it's not just about the dollar because we had an Australian Japanese yen trade. We had two commodities against the Japanese yen. The yen is killing it across the board because they've now let that happen. Yep. But boy, go back out and saw how far they've come. So this is on what time frame are we on the daily there? Um, this is a brutal sell-off that's coming on right, right now. It's, it's fascinating. But uh, it could be a head and shoulder, could not. It's, it's still a lot to happen. We are second guessing. But again, yeah. the grind line here, that something was coming. So if you had looked at, which I failed to do because I hadn't looked at the, the yen debt markets. I haven't had much time on charts. I've been doing quite a bit of things. I'm trying to make sure we don't have too much money in the banks as yep. one and buying gold and all of this. So unfortunately, sometimes we've been missing some things in the chart. That right there with that basing ascending grind line was a pure sign. If you saw that, and you saw the first HVF that I just showed you on the debt markets, two totally different markets, but correlated with a similar theme. You would have thought, hang on, there's something coming here. And it's bullish yen. It's the only way you could have read it. It's still bullish yen. You, wow. would, have, uh, you would have had the trade. And I mean, it's another big call that I haven't made that I'll make retrospectively and say, didn't trade it. We drew it. I forgot about it. And here it is. You know, that's life. Of course. Um, you can't catch them all. It, 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 you, let me tell you, you you're going to, even once you have the process, you're going to miss tons of trades. But the truth of the matter is you need one a year, one theme a year. I gave you the oil trade. That was an 18 month theme that just kept puking cash on you. Yep. You really only have to get one of those right, even a decade, if you get a, one like that. I, the truth of the matter is you'll be doing much more than that. Yep. And and even inside the big moves, there are medium-sized moves, but that's the big macro, macro technical analyst. I told you before on your very program, the, the, I'm not the best macro technical analyst. I'm the only macro technical analyst. I don't see anyone saying on an annual chart or a, a quarterly chart, I see a, a substantial, ridiculous number move and saying something absolutely prone to ridicule. Uh, the, the, the reason I'm able to do this is I don't give an absolute fuck what anyone thinks. I'll say something absolutely stupid if I have to, and I don't care. And if I'm wrong, I've lost the fear of being wrong. I've just done it too much, been wrong enough and been right enough to not care of being badly wrong and standing on big macro time frames and make ballsy calls. Uh, and the fact of the matter is you can put them on and you can trade them. When we do the case study of the energy, I will show put... The options on Plains All-American Pipeline that failed from $26 down to three. I will show you Tallo Trades. I will show you the oil trade itself. I'll show you Carnival, a shipping company that was also in an inverted HVF that crashed. And we were wondering why if the oil prices were going down. All of it is there. It's an entire narrative. It's not one trade. You get one macro theme right. It's five or six trades with mega overperformance ongoing and you're the, you're the front of the news cycle before anyone else with one process that, that starts with you identifying as I am becoming a trader, I want a process and then I will get outcomes and recognizing there's big gaps in between all of those happening and staying there for the long haul, staying for the long haul, not getting burned, not treating it like a casino, not trying to lean on it. Otherwise you pay your price. And that's the other reason you were mentioning lots of speakers that don't actually trade. Uh, there's a certain kind of people that run the casino industries and all the addictive industries. Yep. Um, and actually, most people that are retail traders, by the manner they go about their retail trading, are actually doing a validated, justified, different version to a casino event. 
And that's why, but it's deemed legitimate because now they can look, they can build an opinion instead of red, black, or zero, or, you know, stick on 16 or hold out for 21. Um, they, uh, they can have their own little voodoo juice and they can sound like they're not gambling. You actually get a massive trapped audience. So on one hand, what Richard Hart says is actually true. He is helping people by keeping lots of people out of trading because most people approach it incorrectly. And the way they approach it is like uh, is like uh, approaching roulette, where you have much less chance of winning than the house does. And then they set up people, and people will share opinion and views, so that you can intellectualize your fail, your fail, your failings, uh, and at least sound like a very well educated, bad you know trader, but brilliant economist. That's I, I've come across brilliant, researched, useless traders all over the place. Yep. They know everything about what this politician said to that. They'll know far more than me. And oh, but did you know that this happened and they're going to shift this? They'll be the most well informed, analyzed, read a book for it. Because everybody thinks you can read a book for trading. You uh, read a book. I, I mean, I, I should be a published author, but I, I don't. Because there's nothing that's going to be, you, you know, make you a great trader, read a book. You've got to engage. You've got to do. You've got to have process. And I do all of that in a learning environment. Uh, but maybe I should because I'd get more, I'd, 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 you know, get more people. Into I would it. read that book. That's yeah. for sure. Well, um, and, and you're I'm so right. I can't even type properly. I'm so bloody dyslexic. <laughs> and I've got one of these gaming keyboards. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I hit the board, four different letters come <laughs> up at the same time. It'll drive me bonkers. But the truth of the matter is I should do something basic, simple and small and knock it out. For and then sure. just do enough for them to come and find and give people. And even those foundational principles will change their approaches in life. Yep. Even if it's just the thing to say, do one third of less of the, you know, the amount of trading you're doing now. Yep. Do, uh, you know, all the core, all the core things that I've said on countless YouTubes, I distill. Um, and because some people are readers, they don't watch YouTube, they're into introverts or they what that. I could be helping them. But so maybe it's something, as I say, I must do. For but the sure. whole point of this is, this is a big ass move. This is your news right now in markets and it's continuing. And it smells, I'm, I'm part think it could be a final capitulation. So I know I drew a head and shoulders here, but you could later get a, a, a big hammer and you could just go up. You know, if we have a, a serious risk event, you could go up and you could do again, another, HV, another HVF. I mean, with the amount of debt, until America dies and the full curtain is pulled back, which is reset. As long as we're in the current paradigm, Japan is supposedly the most indebted we know that in terms of unfunded liabilities america is yep. but that, they aren't borrowed against that they've just spent everybody's pension money we know that so they're just taking out of current money to pay them so it's not got a debt or an interest rate attached they're just running a ponzi scheme so until the ponzi collapses then the dollar's over but that's you know that's 600 700 percent plus that's all everybody's um welfare medicaid that they haven't funded They'll kick the can, they'll keep borrowing. But and until that, everyone calls bluff on that, the Japanese are in real, real trouble. For sure. Because they've got a high inflation rate and they've got a ridiculous uh, rate on their bonds. Yeah. So who should own them? Even after this move, who should own them? And look what their currency has done just for perspective. And again, another macro call. Using the same method, you could have done it yourself. And we were watching and waiting for this for years. And it gave you one big mega pump ass move that if you traded correctly, you probably would have earned, you know, a CEO's salary for five, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. In a world where a nurse wouldn't earn, you know, you'll, you'll earn in a day what a nurse gets paid in a year. And that was that. And there she goes. And off she went. And squeezy, squeezy. And we've done all these draws. I'll, I'll switch the eye back on and you'll see it's all in there. Wow. And you could have got out and there's your overperformance. And it's just mega. And I mean, actually, you wouldn't have sold the top. No one does. But had you done, it would have been a 31. If you just got even up to the target on that last, you would have been on a 20, 19.47 risk reward trade. And now it is binning it in the opposite direction. But that can bounce somewhere here in one of these funnels. And then we'll see. It is violent momentum, though, because that's a, it's taken the market by surprise. Too many people started squeezing in. So yeah. this was the other thing we said. 
So listen to this, because this is a learning for people in this. You started to get multiple rising wedge structures that were cascading into each other. One, you got your first pullback. That was post-target. You see that? You would have got out on target. Post-target, major pullback. Till then, no real volatility except that pullback, which was post-second interim, which was smaller. Tell me this isn't fucking magic yeah. that you're looking at. Then you get another cascading. This is the second uh, rising wedge. One of these are going to bite you. What is happening? Everybody is getting in on the yen weakness trade and is buying along the lows here. Everyone is chasing the yen. They're busy getting wrecked now. Properly wrecked. Properly, properly wrecked. Key round number. We drew it. 150. That line was in. What did you do? You actually traded, I think, 152. You did a wick on the month, the three-day chart I'm on now. So it's half a week. It's a half, three quarter, three, 60% of a week. You, you did a, a wick through the 150, and that was key level. Then everyone, and that was peak, everybody saying, Dixie 150. I saw them 120, yep. 150. It just got higher and higher and higher, didn't like, it? Man, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn. I still wasn't good enough. I still wasn't good enough to get uh, all my own. I didn't trade this perfectly. But this turn was coming. This turn was coming. Nothing is necessary.